This is QCC alum David Russell with Joe Massey and the coach Mike Kerr. The alumni game about to begin. The Red will face the Black and then they'll team up and face the current team. Nice names here. Leo is back. Carl Mango is playing. Jarek Bowe, Joshua Lee. Joe Massey's friend Jeff Boone is here. There's Jeff right there. <laughs> He's got the headband on. He's all set for business today, I guess. He'll be jumping number 18 in red. Opening tip is won by the red team. He jumped against Craig Taylor, huh? Craig showing he still has some ups. Black team ball during the game. We'll be talking about some old CUNY memories and Region 15 memories. Dave, is it important who scores first here? Or? Uh, it's usually the, uh, the big key in the alumni game. <laughs> Get the momentum going, right? <laughs> there was a buzzer beater in this game last year. Re re remember, yes. That shot is no good. A buzzer beater, which more importantly than who won, there was no overtime. So we were all winners in that game. <laughs> Anwar Bowling making that move, but he made it too quickly. <laughs> still, he still has some uh, speed there, though, on that move. How about the coaches in this game? Tom Sinickson coaching the black team and Damian Broadwater returning to coach the red team. Oh, who can forget that coach? What'd you say his name was? <laughs> Sinickson? <laughs> about Damian wearing a red jersey on the sidelines. He's like a baseball manager wearing the jersey. One minute in, still looking for the first basket, and there it is. That was a bowling special. He, <laughs> he was able to do that many times on this court with uh, yours truly in attendance. Tom Sinickson not taking his coaching duties lightly. He's coaching the black team. Are there guys from the red team? Yeah, of course, guys from the red team played for him too. Everybody on this court basically played for him. <laughs> a few guys were after Sinickson, as here's a three-pointer for the tie, and it's good. Michael Bravo ties the game at three. There's a jumper from Anwar, and it's good. Bowling with another basket. And the scoreboard says 6-0. That's not right. I didn't forget the scoreboard. Too early in the year for to worry about that. 6-3 is the tally. I think it should be 5-3, but, you know, who cares? Black team ball. <laughs> Bowling had his shot blocked. There was Jeff Boone from behind. Going all the way is Michael Edwards to tie the game at five, maybe. Boy, that block by Boone brought me back because uh, the other night I was watching a VHS of him playing against City Tech with York, and he made the same block on a City Tech player in a crucial part of the game. The most amazing part of that story is you were watching a VHS. Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> I just love the natural quality of it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Mike Kerr's got a nice VHS collection, right, of his old games? Well, I don't feel like I'm... I am an alumni, but I don't feel like I'm that old. But I do have every game I ever coached as the head coach at FIT from 07 to 2010 on VHS. I'm Very nice. I'm not sure I'm proud to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Say it. This is true. <laughs> and, and be proud of it, because you are one of the few... As a free throw is airballed. You get a bit of everything in the alumni game. We're going to let Dave speak right now, though. The scoreboard is correct. We're tied at five, and there's a foul on Michael Bravo. And Bravo should be easy to distinguish with those shorts. They got the ball into Robert Alexis, who David was the 2007 Player of the Year here in the uh, junior college ranks. He was a little more slender at that time, but Robert's still in pretty good shape, pretty good condition. The problem was he had hurt his knee 
He was scheduled to go to Baruch, and he just never made it uh, to that level. Alexis hits both to give Black a 7-3 lead, I think. 7-5. <laughs> Here's Joe Massey's friend Jeff Boone giving it to Bravo. Double teamed. Sub Keo outside. Nice behind the back pass, and the three pointer is good. All of that, uh, Coach Kerr, off the fly by the seat of your pants offense. <laughs> That's right, I've incorporated that as a coach many times myself. <laughs> it was Kevin Paradise who hit the three pointer. Trying to answer back, that three is no good, and a rebound by Jeff Boone. And it was the current coach, Carlo Mango, who took that three. Jeff Boone at the other end almost put it in. I believe Carl and Jeff played together one year here at Queensboro. Not the second year for Emengo, when he really uh, blossomed into a, a real good ball player. I wonder if Emengo is going to play against his current team in game two or if he's going to coach from the sidelines. And traveling is called. Nice move, but took an extra step to the right on that. One thing, Carl Amengo just loves to play, though. He loves to come out to these games and play. You could see it. Like a few years ago in one of these games, he went one-on-one -on -one with Teron Simpson. Yeah, yeah. All the current players are uh, into that possession. And that shot is good. Sebastian Profit. Profit, yeah. Uh, I, I assume Tehran is back this year, or uh, is that... Uh, I don't know. We'll have to find out about that. I think I saw him earlier. Nice That's pass from Boone inside. Bravo puts it in. You don't even have to applaud him. He has the name to you know, <laughs> get his own attention. There's a three-pointer. No good. That's a rebound, no good. Tipped and the red ball. Robert Alexis a couple of times after that ball. That's what he was really strong at when he was here and he was at the top of his game for Cynics. And he, he had a lot of power inside, just a tremendous ball player. A few new guys come in for the black team. A few subs. And ask the coach Mike Kerr if he remembers coaching against a lot of these guys. So I know he was at Adelphi for a while. I'm not sure which ones he remembers. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, a few of the faces are familiar. Um, I can't can't say I remember all the names. I'd hate to say, but I will say this: I just from what we've seen so far, I wish they played more like this than they did when they did play against me. Um, <laughs> Father Time has certainly uh, <laughs> caught up to a few of these players. And one of the things I noticed that does happen in, in, in all alumni games is that it took all of about two and a half minutes for both teams to switch from their man-to-man -man defense into the 2-3 zone. And the pace, the up and down pace has certainly slowed down a bit as well. Although the game hasn't how, gotten sloppy yet. What was, how far back do you go with the junior college here though? Uh, My uh, first year as head coach at Fashion Institute was 2007. And you, that, you weren't assisting anywhere either, were you? I was. I was an assistant for, for five years prior to that at Adelphi University and then seven years prior to that at oh, You were college. at FIT, uh, uh, you said, right? My first head job was at FIT. Did you 2007. coach, did, were any chance you coached against Jerry Coppage? Uh, I may have in, yeah. in uh, one of those early years. The, the names, again, escape me from, from uh, I've done so many scouting reports, Joe. Uh, it's hard to remember every name. We'll give it back today, but I haven't seen Coppage out here at any time, and he was truly one of the remarkable players in this program. So. Well, certainly there was a lot, of, a lot of good talent coming from Queensbury. I remember we've always had a lot of wars with them. Um, you know, and there was years that we had a lot of talent and years that they had talent. And we always had tough games uh, here at Queensboro and also when they came to our place, for sure. Scoreboard says it's 11-10, 14-25 to go in the first. Eric White coming into the game, his first alumni game. He was with Queensboro last year. Joey Bell won one of the best performances we ever saw. The last game he played here against BMCC, Eight points in the first half, which was nice, and then out of nowhere, explode for 28 in the second half. 
That's right. You know, when you come in these games, David, you're not saying you're old yet because you only play here two years, so you're still relatively a young man. Well, it's funny, Mike Kerr was talking about father time. Like, most of these guys are 28. And Eric White puts it in. He could have the big game because he's, you know, his first alumni game. Very spry around the basket he will be. And Jarek Bowen, the game oh, for the nice, red team. Nice ball movement, huh? And Bo got the hand in. He'll stay with the black team. Oh. And Leo win for the black team. And his brother Marcel wasn't too bad either in the CUNY as the game is tied at 13. Yeah, not bad, not bad. We saw him put on a uh, Bill Russell-like performance at York College one afternoon against Brooklyn. He was a player. Here's White again, and it's good again. Four points for number four. I remember White was on the Robert Holford team that made the CUNY championship game. You happen to know where Robert is now? I'm not sure. I don't think he's been coaching the last two years. Yeah. I, I think he was with a high school program for a year or so, but I'm not sure. It was nice. Last year at the CUNY playoffs, they uh, I, I introduced the 2005 Hostos National Championship team at halftime of the CUNY title game. I know Coach Carr from BMCC was over there at uh, Boys and Girls. I don't know if he's still there. I, There's that a was your predecessor. I, yeah. Yeah, uh, Gene Carroll, you mean? Uh, Carroll. Yeah, Gene Carroll. Yeah, that's why I got confused. Yeah, they were interchangeable almost. Yeah, he was there a very long time and and was, you know, a long time coach at BMCC. Uh, A few coaches before I got there, right? Gene Carroll was there for quite a while, and then after he stepped down, they really were going through coaches almost on a yearly basis. Coach Carroll was great. He was great. He'd come in the gymnasium. He'd have his keys on a big ring hanging from his belt. I mean, there was nothing... Nothing made up about this guy. He was the real thing. He was a know? wonderful guy, and yeah. so the former player, like in the years that I coached there, a lot of the former players always had great things to say about him, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the guys who had played for him, and, and he was helping out at Boys and Girls High School. I, I believe he still is. I'm not positive. I though. saw him in the paper at the end of the bench, so that's how I knew he was there. And yeah, then either, either he's trespassing, uh, he's either trespassing or he's still coaching there. <laughs> <laughs> Leo with another basket at 17-15. Leo with another one, huh? Here's a three-pointer for the lead. And Paradise missed, but was fouled and will go to the line for three shots. You were talking about the BMCC coaches. It was like uh, the Steinbrenner Yankees, right? A different manager every year. Who would that make you? Is that Are you Pinella or Martin? I think I was more like Bucky Dent. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> although they tried to get rid of me, I actually stuck it out for three years, and uh, and that was, uh, that was enough. They didn't... Uh, I actually ended up pursuing another opportunity in coaching after that, but but um, I'm not sure there was a, I'm not sure there was a lot of crying going on when I left there. <laughs> there was from the other coaches. I'm not going to touch that one with a 10-foot pole. So, 17-17, <laughs> about eight minutes in. Is Asonye number 11, uh, David? He's uh, number three for the black team. Oh, number three. Okay. Paradise hits all three free throws. 18-17 lead for the red team. Leo, not as big as his brother. Not as tall as his brother, but very athletic. And then Leo Leo went to uh, Farmingdale. I thought he was going to go to York, too, for a little while there. There's Bo, oh. and Light touched it last. That had a lot of mustard on it. You're gonna eat a few uh, hot dogs later. Maybe. Yeah. Don't uh, don't eat too many yeah. because <laughs> I'm making something for dinner tonight. Shot is no good, and Boone <laughs> that's fighting Dave, himself for a that's rebound. That's David's f- favorite line from the Odd Couple movie. That shot is no good. Oh. And Boone committed a foul, counted, and the foul. And then Boone high-fives wow. the man that he fouled. 
We, we use a, a Clydeism once in a while. That was swooping and hooping on that one. <laughs> Amari Taylor with the basket and trying to finish the conventional three-point play. Close game. I want to see if, well, they're going to take him out right now. I was just going to say, I want to see if at some point Jeff tries to take a little more control in this game. But Damien knew you wanted to see that, so he took him out. Yep. Maybe he wanted to rest him up. He's going to have him come out and go to work. White misses the jumper, and now Leo with the ball. So, David, you said he did not, he went to Farmingdale, or he did not go to Farmingdale? No, he, he went to Farmingdale. Played for Coach Smiles. Nice play by Bo. And there's the highlight of the alumni game. Very nice. And Dabney Hunt finished to tie the game at 20. There's a three-pointer, no good. But the basket is good. Horatio DiCiardo puts it in. Pichardo was Johnny on the spot, get that rebound. Hunt again ties it at 22. I don't know if Pichardo's brother played for Hunter, but there was a Pichardo at Hunter too. I don't know if I asked him that last year. Maybe I did. The answer didn't stick with you. <laughs> Three pointer, no good. Leo with the rebound. The basket is no good and rebounded by Bo, who crosses over Leo. Dabney Hunt has been feeling it. Nice pass. It's no good. Light can't put it in. Bravo tips it in after all that. Now, my memory serves me correct. I think Hunt was doing a little of that last year, too. He's really quick going lateral uh, wise. His name's not wise. I mean, when he goes laterally. <laughs> that jumper is no good. And the foul called. Little guys in the red are going up and getting those rebounds. That one was grabbed by uh, Bo. So you have one coach in the game, Carl Amengo. Uh, ben Chobapond is not here today. The coach of LaGuardia who played for Cynicson, we call Benny Buckets. He said he has a game at uh, LaGuardia. I was joking with him, he's a 49ers fan. I think he's just in hiding. Oh boy. They're terrible this year. Bo's jumper is no good. They'll Mike be Kerr back. is happy They'll to say that the Giants beat the 49ers last week. They'll be back though. When, when Joe Montana takes over as, <laughs> as uh, the boss over there, they'll be back. <laughs> Ooh. Inside and a foul is called. Pretty funny, by the way, not to turn to football, but did, did you see what Montana said? Everybody cheats in football. That's that's what made us great. I mean, come on. <laughs> Spygate. We used to put uh, oil on our uniform so people slipped off. when it, It's been done <laughs> for centuries, for goodness sake. You ever cheat my car? Get some uh, Region 15 advantages? Well, I mean, the, you know, like most coaches, we go by the old adage, cheat, cheat, never get beat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, when you play at this level low, you want the kids to be on the level. I mean, that's for big money. This is, this is, you know, at this level, kids from Joe Massey, go out there and try to do what you can the right way. No, of, of course, and this level... Um, is where, you know, a lot of these players who do have aspirations to move on to the senior college level, they learn a lot of basketball here. Yeah. Because unfortunately, yeah. a lot of them come from high school programs that either don't have a program or it's not, you know, maybe not run the best or maybe, right. maybe they don't have a real right. basketball coach there in some cases. Um, and they're really learning the game and learning and learning the commitment level that it takes to be a college player. And, you know, it's our job as, as coaches and as staffs to – to really instill that into them and to get them ready for, you know, potentially playing at the, at the four-year college level, which is most of these guys' goals. Dabney Hunt hit a three for the red team and Anwar Bowling missed one for the black. The red comes the other way. Jarek Bow 
Back to Hunt, who's been having a nice first half. And there are two more points. Whoa. He's been the uh, alumni game MVP so far, if there was such a thing. Hunt Hunt doing it. There's, There's a skill from Bo. Yeah, cut off going the passing for the lane. Oh, uh, Jarek Bo laying it in. 31-23. One of the young men was taking some, uh, you know, pregame. Uh, they were going through. Uh, Mengo was going over the things with his regular team. Kid went up, missed a one-hand jam. Carl said to him, you have two hands, you know. <laughs> That'd be nice when you have a coach who looks like he could still play. <laughs> Devon Ratriff with that basket. Big one like for the black team. They need uh, to keep things going here. Here's Bo going inside, but he loses it. Bowling is called for traveling. Ah. I don't think he knew if he wanted to dunk or lay it in. So he gets neither. By the way, going back to the Montana comment, I want to get it correct exactly what he was saying. He didn't say cheat. He said we looked for an advantage, and it's always been like that. You know, mm -hmm. people look for an advantage. So long passes, the defense fell asleep. The layup is no good. Rips it away. And timeout is called. There's 6.59 to go in the first half. It's 31-25 red. Hey Dave, quick moving first half here. The way it should be in an alumni game. Keith Keough. Boy. I remember Herman coached an alumni game a few years ago and he was calling timeout after timeout. That Herman. <laughs> you can't trust him, you know? You never know what's up his sleeve. <laughs> is, is he here today? Yes, buddy? he's behind the red team bench. He's doing good, right? He's doing well. Yes, yes, recovering from the uh, It's early in the season. Car grammar accident has last to be year. worked on. Yeah, he had the car accident. Yeah. There he is. I don't think he's ever possible to miss the game here. Light hits it three. Nice off the front rim, off the glass, and in. 34-25. Well, they've opened up a bit of a, a lead now. and uh, Light, Light is giving Hunt some competition for the fictional MVP. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. They made that call on the red team. They said Alexis pushed me with his off arm, and he did. He kind of fended him off and grabbed the ball. So the red can push the lead into double digits. You know, when you're in the playground, they call that an old school move and you get away with it. No autopsy, no foul on the playground. <laughs> Bravo for three, and it's good. 37-25. And there's a foul. Deep in the heart of enemy territory there. <laughs> Carl Lomingo uh, getting a few bruises uh, out here in the early season. Let's see if he gives them back here. 6-10 to play in the half. Black team down by 12. A mango for three, no good. Well, they've, they've moved one of the more veteran players, Craig Taylor, back in the game and see if that makes a difference. Keo. Give and go, nice play, 39-25. Because the red team has really gotten to work now. He's got that little hitch in his shot where he puts the uh, non-shooting hand behind his head. Three-pointer, no good. This was a close game five minutes ago. They want to run, the red team. They, that they, shot is blocked. A little more liveliness in their step, and they're getting up court. Do you remember any guys with hitches in their shot like that? The uh, non-shooting hand behind the head? Well, um, only Carl Malone, but I mean, he sort of earned the uh, the uh, the ability to do something like that. What he I was, was more he impressed was pretty with, pretty good, he, yeah, pretty good, yeah. yeah, pretty good. What I was more impressed with was how he skied for that defensive rebound. He almost got one foot off the floor. Well, forty-one twenty-five now. What was what was your specialty, Mike, when you played? That? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal a line from uh, Jeff Van Gundy, who we all know. <clears throat> when they asked him why he, his playing career ended at Division III, um, in Division Three, which mine did as well. During the preseason, 
I could beat those cones off the dribble all the whole time. My first step went right by him. But once they put actual people in front of me, it was a little more difficult. <laughs> that was always the rub, wasn't it? 41-27, 5.05 to go. And that, and that put less green in your pocket. Yeah. Yeah. White jumper is no good. And Keo puts it in. 43-27, you saw how tough a mango was playing white on defense. He didn't want his old player to beat him. Come on, Carl, do something here. <laughs> you, you can see his former players getting on him. Come on, Carl. There's a nice play and the red team will go to the line. No, the red team's just running him out right now. Yeah, I mean, you, you mentioned that uh, Carl Mingo doesn't want to get beat by his former player, and I, I give him a lot of credit for being out here and playing. Yes. Um, you know, he'll probably play the next game. I think he played against his current yeah. team last year in the alumni game, and I give him a lot of credit for doing that. Um, you know, he, obviously he's still young enough, and he's, you can tell, you can see he can still get up and down and still play. But it gives uh, the players that play for him now a chance to critique his game a little bit. Well, you may say critique. I would say they can get their shots in on him now. Because <laughs> I know, I, I don't know, with some of my teams, I don't know if I would have got out there and played with them. Um, if you know, gave him a, gave him carte blanche to get after me. I'm sure. I'm sure if he does uh, talk to his team before, which I'm sure he will, just to prep them before the game. I'm sure he's going to say, just don't guard number two out there, and everything will be fine. <laughs> nice bank shot by Craig Taylor there in the meantime. 44-29, red team. 4:20 to go in the first. Three pointer. No good, but that follow-up is good. I think he forgot which way he was going for a second because he was right next to the basket and turned around. Nice pickoff underneath there. 46-29. It's Kenny Delaney who put in that last basket. Four minutes to go in the first. A mango. Nice pass to three-pointer. He's good. Craig, Craig Taylor. Craig Taylor again, yeah. yeah. Big man hitting some shots from the perimeter. He wants to he wants to get back in this game, Craig. He... Bravo. An offensive foul is called. Shot wouldn't have counted anyway. They were talking to the old timers in the NBA uh, alumni games, and they said, you know, for the first few minutes, you're just happy you could run out there and everything. Then the old uh, competitive nature starts to take over, and you, you want to play. You want to be good in that game, you know? Jeffrey Boone with the rebound. There's Joshua Lee, another recent uh, you know, early alumni. And there's another offensive foul. As on Bravo, he ran over the player. Didn't go around him delicately. He just ran over him. He's got that interesting Fu Manchu there. <laughs> A mango to Taylor. He's hit two threes. Up inside the shot off glass is no good and rebounded by Joshua Lee. Pass to Boone. Going inside the wild shot is no good. Keo tried to put it in and does off glass. Nice first half for Keo. Nice first half for a lot of guys on the red team. That's why they lead by 16. Oh! And a blocking foul. Took one for the team there. Keo. Keo said, uh, get the number of that truck. Mike Kerr seeing how physical this is, he's kind of glad he didn't play in those alumni games. You could come out of here with some bruises. Number 15 is solidly built. Now that's Pichardo. Who has the nicer uniforms today, the black or the red team? A little more fashion on the black uniform. I, the red guys are all in business for themselves with the shorts. <laughs> we have fun here. 
And then the uh, alumni will play the regular team, right? And yeah. that should be very interesting. That is always interesting. We got a kick out of that one. Last year, uh, didn't the, the alumni win? The women's game was very yeah, good. Yeah, the women's, them. didn't they win one of the alumni teams? Well, the women's alumni team came back to beat the current team. Right, that turned into right. a good lesson for the current team. And uh, we were talking team. to the coaching staff, remember? We were, and we were saying, do you take these games seriously? <laughs> yeah, we want to win that game, man. We, so, almost a, a Joshua Lee and I shot. The red team has hit the 50-point mark in the first half. 50-32. So I thought we were going to get coaches who were going to go, well, we try our best. But they said, no, we, we seriously told them we got to win this game now. Three-pointer, Craig Taylor. That's three now for him, keeping the black team around, kind of. I just missed Craig Taylor when he uh, played I, by a few years. Under two minutes to play in the first half. Nice play. It's Michael Edwards giving the red team a 52-35 lead. But there is Craig on my, uh, on my list, 1999 Player of the Year, Community College. Right after Gamal Steele. Oh, Gamal was great. Was an assistant here for a few years. And right between Alexis and Taylor was the great Jeff Boone, who's down there. It'd be nice to see Queensboro getting back to that, a player of the year every year. And every year. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's what happens when you win five CUNY titles in a row. You usually have the best players. 1995, it started with Sam Lopez. I was about two and a half years old at the time. Sounds like a recording star, Sam Lopez, because I remember Sam Cook, you know. The... And then you had Kasim Palmer the year after. And then it was just a run of them. Shot is good. It's Amari Taylor making it 52 39, 45 seconds to go in the first half. But you know, you know, it was really impressive. Not only did they win Player of the Year, but they won the championship every year. And there's Jeff Boone, 54-39. And then Jeff Boone, the yeah, football Jeff Boone play again. <laughs> and, that, and Jeff Boone again, taking him for the pin. Going to take a mango out. I wonder if one of the mango's uh, current players took out a bounty on him. Like, hey, Jeff, one. You know, you know, Carl had the great luxury of playing for two great coaches. He played for Cynics in here. Then he went and he played for the uh, Baruch fella, Ray Rankis, who was a class guy all the way. And probably the, one of the most liked CUNY coaches of all time. Even along, more than Mike Kerr. Along with Mike and, along with Mike Kerr and Ron St. John and... Uh, and the, and the guy at Hunter, remember the guy at Hunter? We always got to throw him in there uh, who won all the championships. I can't think of his name right now. Mike Kerr's right in there, though. A mango splits the free throws. It's 54-40 <laughs> red team. Mike's going, yeah, because I'm sitting here, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm only on that list if you list us alphabetically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ray Amelbert. Ray Amelbert. Red team holding for the final shot. Ten seconds to go. Nice pass from Lee to Edwards. 56-40. See if they could beat the buzzer. They don't even get a shot off. So a very good first half for the red team. They go into the half leading by 16. Yeah, the black team took a pounding. Uh, they couldn't stop them in the transition game at all. The defense in the alumni games is always not up to the level of the 1989 Pistons. It's a just a little less. A little better than my defense. Uh, That's true. But Dave, 15 years ago, I could really play them. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was past my prime, though. So we'll be back for the second half. Red team leads by 16. Second half about to begin. The red team is leading 56-40 at halftime. Good first half for a lot of guys on the red team. Eric White, Jeff Boone, Michael Edwards. Yeah, I mean, this this Coach Sinekson, you know, he's got to get in the ball game here. 
I mean, literally, Tom has to get in the ball game. Maybe he should get out there. And, uh, and Dabney Hunt had a good first half for the red team. You know, Tom can play, by the way. So he's, a, he's a good player. And uh, Mike Kerr actually coached against him in Region 15 as a pretty funny Coach of the Year story, year where everybody won Coach of the Year. Oh, yeah. It was actually uh, my first year at FIT as a head coach, 2007, 2007, 2008. And Tom was still the coach of Queensborough. I believe he was his last or second to last year here. And he had a team that wasn't overly, overly talented. But he did such a terrific job. I think they finished in third place. And uh, Richie Race was the coach at Suffolk Community College, the Selden campus. They finished first. My team at FIT finished second. Um, and when we, we all met after the season as coaches and voted for coach of the year for the region, it ended in a three-way tie between the three of us, myself, uh, Tom Sinickson, and, um, and Richie Race. And I know I voted for Tom. You can only vote for one person who's not yourself. Um, and we all finished in a tie. And then when the, when the director came in to say, listen, three guys tied, would we like to re-vote? You know, we all said, no, nah, I mean, let's just, you know, you know, we don't want to divide it up. Let's all just share it. And if it's okay to have a three-way co-coach of the year, and that's what we did, and it's it's a credit to, you know, you know, to Tommy, who whose team, like I think he'll even admit, didn't have as much raw talent as as my team or Richie's team did, but he did such a terrific job in, in leading them to a, I think it was a third place finish um, in, in in the region, um, did such a great job that he really really deserved it, and I, I was happy that he was, that um, you know I would have been fine if he had won it instead of me, but I was very happy that that he and I. Uh, along with Richie, who was an also also a terrific coach and a terrific man. Did you get a trophy for that, coach? We did, yeah. We Where do you have that right? Uh, now? It's uh, in a in a crate somewhere in the, the basement. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I actually have I actually I actually have two of them, and they're both in the same the same box. They're right near the VHS tapes of all the all the <laughs> games that I've coached, which I can't watch because who has a VHS player anymore? There you go. That's a Mike Kerr answer right there. There's a blocking foul. It's 58-41, red team. You know, you're an entertaining guy, Mike. You really are. I wish some of my former <laughs> athletic directors thought so. <laughs> well, they thought you were entertaining. They just didn't like your coaching. That was, that was the problem. It could be, but eh, to each his own. That's what, that's what we say. Hey, look, these kids got the real Queensboro uniform on over here. Oh, an airballed free throw as everybody gets on him. Hey, you got a, uh, a, 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 a Dave, I was going to call you Mike. Dave, they have a little black in the uniform now, huh? The Tigers. Uh. Yeah. Both free throws are missed, but at least that one hit the rim. So black team trying to cut into the lead. They got to work on it. There's Anwar. The gave defense has been a little better in the first minute of the second half. We'll see he if gave uh, the Oh, look at that high stepping by Keo right there. Nice passing. The three pointer is good. That was uh, that was the former player of the year, Alexis there. It's paradise with the three, 61 41. 18 25 to go. And there's a foul call. You know, Mike, a lot of those Region 15 meetings were fun. You had three coaches of the year elected. And then once you were telling me a team that finished in fourth place with fewer wins than the team that finished in fifth. Is that right? Well, yeah, that, that actually did happen. In the, in the old days, before there was an even number of teams in the region, there was, there was a strange number. And you didn't play everyone the same number of times. That's right. So if you played somebody twice in your quote-unquote mini-league, you'd get one point per game. And if you played somebody once, you'd get two points for that game if you right, won it. Right. So it was a point system. So ironically, it was my team. Um, one of the years, I was, it was my third year at FIT. We finished, um, I believe we were 10 and five in the league, was our record. But I don't remember how many points we had. And we finished fourth. And Nassau Community College was 11 and four. And they finished behind us, finished fifth. And I couldn't figure it out. So, you know, I, 
I never paid attention to such and, things. And, and remember, <laughs> and the guy up in Westchester County used to distribute all the stats. Remember that up at the uh, uh, Walter Walter Hauck. Right. Yeah. And and you know what? I had worked up in Westchester for a while uh, doing the high school basketball. I never thought I'd see Walter Hauck's name again. And then I come down here to CUNY, and everything has Walter Hauck on it. Right. I mean, we're yeah. part of the Region 15 yeah. as a coach. That's that's the person you had to submit your stats to every right. week, right. whatever games you played that week. Um, yeah, you had to you had to do that. That's why we coach. We were trying to keep up with all that stuff at the time. You know, we'd go ask Rodney Carr who were the top teams in your conference. Right. We didn't see these kids, by the way. I mean, you never got a chance to. Right. Well, it was hard. I mean, and the region is is fairly spread out. It's hard yeah. to get to all the games. It's not like, I mean, if it was just the CUNY league. It's not so hard because they're all uh, you know centrally located. But but it's a funny story how they used to run the league, and it was always very confusing to me. And um, not to take all your time, David, but my first year at FIT was probably the only time ever that we finished in second place a half a game out of first. That's right. And yeah. another reason, you didn't play the same number of games as other teams. No, you So didn't. you could finish a half a game out. It took me years to figure out how we finished a half a game out. I was going to say, how did A.J. Winder feel, as it's Keo puts it, and how did A.J. feel about f- finishing behind a team he won more games than. By the time David came on the scene, everything was all evened out at that point. Yeah, well, he had, has it easy. He had six teams in the league and all that. Yeah, that's very yeah. easy then. Well, to answer your question, AJ, honestly, I was more upset than he was because I couldn't figure it out. He just, he's he been in the league a lot longer than me, and, and he knows you know the crazy nature of how they set up. You know, it was almost like uh, it didn't matter what you did during the year. They just rolled the dice and that's picked right. names out of a hat. That's right. But um, I was probably more upset about it. I, I even said in the meeting, I said, this is unfair. I go, Nassau should be ahead of us. But maybe, I mean, we all, we did beat them during the season that, that right. year. I know we only played them once. And they told you, Mike, we'll take that into account. I, guess, I don't know if that was part of the reason, but it was just, it was just a weird system. And I remember, <laughs> I do remember this, though. I, w- I will say this. When they did even out the number of teams, now you got to play everybody twice. Yeah. But not, not everybody was happy about that because now you got to truck up to Sullivan every year instead of every other year. It's not an you gotta even tru- thing. you got to truck up to Poughkeepsee. Thing, yeah. You're right. Yeah. But, you know, at least at least you'd have one tough travel year and one easy travel year, back, you know, you know uh, on and off. If you- at least when Sullivan beat you by 30, you didn't have to go up there for three hours. Right. It was always easier to get beat by 30 at home than it is on the road. Although I... I I can't speak for uh, the other teams, but we didn't usually get beat by 30, although it has happened. It's like when we did the second USBL, not the first one. Who are you playing? Connecticut. Who are you playing tomorrow? Connecticut. Who are you playing next week? Connecticut. They had like three teams in the whole league, you know, so right. well, it's that was, tough. That's, yeah, mean, that's what it was. It's, it's hard. And uh, well, we, well, Region 15 didn't have a lack of teams. It was just... It was just a, it was just a strange number that yeah. was spread out. Yeah. And the other thing is CUNY, you know, wanted to keep the integrity of the CUNY League. The Hudson Valley teams wanted to keep the integrity of their Hudson Valley group. They also had like a, a mini tournament like the CUNY League does here. Um, and then there was a couple of odd, odd man out teams like FIT, like Nassau, um, like Suffolk. Like, like we didn't have anybody else to play. We were just kind of almost like, uh, you know, we, didn't, we weren't part of another league. We were just yeah. part of Region 15. So... What we knew was Region 15 was our was our league. Mike Kerr and Joe Massey for the way it was. <laughs> now we bring it back to David. David, who's going to win the Met Cup Series, by the way? I don't know, but I'll be there. Oh, all right. I, I'll, I'll make predictions. I'll tell you after the fact who you won, You have a though. nice seat. I, you have a nice yeah. seat for it. Mike Kerr giving me a ride after the game, so I have to be nice to him for a few hours. By the way, the red team is winning 66-44, 15-30 to go. They continue to do it all. They're just uh, a little bit faster than the black team. Ooh, Keo with a nice move. He's got to save some of that for the second game. He should have saved some of that for when he played you. Yeah. Keo going back to the way it was. And the black team answers back. 68-46. I think I would get number 11 the ball a little more. That was a nice move. Oh, Joe Massey telling Tom Sinnickson how to coach. Oh, no, Edwards no, all the never, way. Never. Nice move. Wouldn't do that. <laughs> 70-46, under 15 minutes to play. You notice I have nothing but complimentary things to say to Tom at all. On time. air, yeah. No, I, ne- I, I can't coach uh, worth a, a bean next to him. 70 to 48, David. Uh, another, just speaking about uh, Coach Sinnickson, uh, one one person I haven't seen, I don't know if he's here, is Larry Dantzler here? 
No, I, I haven't. I haven't seen him. Remember, we saw him at the CUNY playoffs last year. Yeah, Larry was was the coach here um, several of the years that I coached in the league, and what a wonderful, wonderful man! I'm so, yeah, yeah, and, really and was. another guy yeah. that we were speaking about, Gene Carroll at BMCC earlier. Marvelous recruiter, and yeah, just, and, and yeah. his kids all loved him. Like his players really always had great, great things to say about him. And just as as an aside. Um, when he when he was let go here at Queensboro, he called me. I was still the coach at BMCC, sort of out of the blue, and he let me know that he wasn't returning here. And and I hired him as an assistant on the spot. I mean, I, I couldn't wait to work with him. And it, it was unfortunate that that was the year that he had some physical problems. His back went out, and he wasn't able to he wasn't able to to come I, work with I'd me. I'd be honest with you though. He he was one of those guys. I think he was a better assistant than a head coach. And some guys are just not made. Uh, they just can't do the head coach. Well, it is it is a totally different animal. It is different. terrific. You know? Well, they they say that the biggest move in sports is 18 inches when you move from the second chair to the first yeah, chair. Yeah, yeah. And and Larry, although he did a, a he, he did a good job uh, when we had to play against him, I was very excited to have him come on on my staff, um, you know, afterwards. And it was just unfortunate that circumstances kept it from 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 happening. He ended up not coaching anywhere that year. Yeah, um, but he was he's a wonderful guy. I wish he was here wonderful today. I love I love to I love to say hello to him again. And a wealth of knowledge. Michael Bravo had another three seconds to go. Seventy three fifty two. Keo almost put in again. Bravo is fouled. It's funny, Larry actually had a lot of success as a head coach in middle schools. He won two, he won titles at two different schools in the same uh, division. Well, you know, you know, David, it's, uh, sometimes it's a question of, 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 of you know, what technique you're going to use at what level, and it just doesn't translate the same way. And uh, But like Mike stated several times, and I have to whole heartedly agree, you're not going to find a better guy than Larry Dantzler. He... You know, he has that kind of uh, persona that you just get to know him and you you find it a pleasure talking to him. And there's nothing he doesn't know about the game. Then there's other guys you can't talk to a lick and they coach, uh, you know, they win everything everywhere they go. And you can't talk to them. Yeah. What are you trying to say, Joe? Not you. <laughs> I'm I, kidding, I never, I'm kidding. You know, I never had the uh, good... Uh, 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 the good luck of, uh, of doing a game you were coaching in. So uh, I many times I had hoped I would, but I, maybe I did one somewhere. I don't even remember. Yeah, you might be better off. <laughs> <laughs> but I, actually, I, I also want to mention some of the former coaches of Queensboro that, I mean, I don't know all of them, but I mean, certainly the ones that, that I coached against and, and recruited maybe some of their players when I was in the Division Two level yeah. as an assistant. But would also be remiss uh, without mentioning Coach Atkinson, for whom this game is named for. Another terrific, terrific guy who was an assistant with uh, with Coach Dantzler and took over the team, I think, one or two years when I was at FIT, I think the one year. And um, just a wonderful man. And, um, you know, we all miss him, of course, uh, in, the, in the CUNY. And, and a um, wonderful nice assistant. Remember him a wonderful assistant to Cynixon during all those uh, championships and stuff. And Atkinson was the one who hired Larry Dantzler, and then he passed away, so Larry applied for the head coaching job and got it. You hear names. That, that's the funny thing, as Dave. As you go along, you hear names all the time, and then you never meet the people. But when you get to meet them, you say, but this is Larry Atkinson. What a great guy. What a great guy. Well, here's one we always mention every year when we do the alumni game at Senex and Coaches, and we say he was Anthony Mason's lawyer. Now, where is it? Anthony Mason is gone now. And you knew him, Joe, right, from uh, when yeah. you were with the Knicks. Right, right. One of my favorites, in fact. I mean, I don't know how many times I interviewed him, about every time, I guess, because you couldn't get Pat Riley. <laughs> Seriously, Pat Riley, you could not go near him. <laughs> so he was, he was the was Mike Kerr of the NBA. It, no, it was his thing. You know, he'd just get ready for the game. He didn't want to talk. Just didn't want to talk. Oh. Dabney Hunt puts it in at 78-56, red team, under 12 minutes to play. They keep running. Timeout called by the black team. Tom Sinnickson calling timeout. He's down by 22 with 11.45 to go. What's he going to say during this timeout, David? Well, I'm, I'm not sure. So Howard Johnson's or no? Yeah, making I some plans for the post game. I, I hop or <laughs> there's an I hop on Hillside Avenue. Maybe okay. we'll go there after the game. 
The red team feeling very, very uh, confident right now. You know, the red team might hit the 100 mark in this game. They might. We always have something to look forward to in these games, right? And and number eight has the most colorful shorts out there. That's another thing we can... Like That's really the, the most fluorescent important thing, I, yeah. I think. Count it on the foul. The fluorescent look. Devon Ratriff. Trying to keep his team alive, you know? Mm -hmm. And with the green sneakers, every, everybody's got some green today. Whoa. Oh. Nice moves by Bo. Jarek Bo, who played for Larry Dantzler. You remember Bo, right, Dave? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was telling you before the game, the first game I announced here was five years ago yesterday. It was the alumni game. You know who's a good teammate? Stefan Medard. It's my favorite name. Oh, yeah. He had some big games that we did, too. It, the best I, games he... I remember you did a game with Sean here against Kingsborough and Stefan had 20 points in the first half. I think I did a game with you also here and uh, I was telling you it's only a matter of time before he gets into it with that name and you were laughing <laughs> and he, I think he came out and he had a big second half. Bow for three, no good. The 78-60. That was uh, in reference to the uh, quote about his name. It's like a Marv Albert name, you know. Stefan Bedard, you know. 78-62. You got to inch your way in here with 10-24 to go. It can be done, but they have to really play D now. They've been playing well after Sinnickson called that timeout. Light misses a shot. The only thing is they can't run like the red team. They're not really good at moving the ball up there. 10 minutes to play. Yeah, that's good. It says 80-64. Big rebound there. Yeah. 9.45 to go. Off the red team, black ball. And Carl Amengo back in. It, they gotta make a final push here to uh, get close yeah. so they can make a run in this game. I miss it, I thought they had 78 and then Light missed a shot and then said 80. Maybe not. Mike Kerr isn't sweating it. Here's a three pointer and it's good and all of a sudden it's a game. 80-67. You could see that was going to be good. Well, this black team has really gone on a run since that last time out, and I know uh, you guys were talking about what Coach Sinnickson might have been saying. He probably was saying that he would buy the first round of drinks if they came back in the house. <laughs> so these guys are, these guys are, uh, are on fire now. Now the scoreboard says 80-78. That's not right. Dabney Hunt misses. I think it's 80-67. Oh, all of a sudden, it's a two-point game. 78-67. The scoreboard is wrong. Uh, that, no, that last one was a 16-point play. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Cynic Sim was calling in the huddle. It just was instituted while you were speaking just now. And you guys are saying coaches like to cheat. What about the scoreboard operator? Now they're going to settle it. And uh, it's early season for them, too. You know, it's also tough because I think I'm the only one who's even been paying attention to the scoreboard. Well, then you're squarely to blame. <laughs> That's what, you know, no, no joking, no. I've announced a lot of games, but I never wanted to be on the sideline doing the PA or keeping those official things. That is a hard thing to do. That's not easy. You have to stay into the game mentally the whole game. And so are we just going forward with the score tied at 80? Is that oh, I, okay? I don't get it. I, it's a newfangled way of playing. They want to keep everybody in the building. That's what it is. I guess. <laughs> so all of a sudden we're in danger of overtime. <laughs> the black team with a uh, 
a mysterious 15-point comeback the, in two uh, minutes. Score, maybe the score was incorrect for a long time. I don't know. And they never corrected it. And pretty soon they're going to start making trades to uh, even <laughs> off the teams, I guess. While you were away, you didn't miss anything. No. Joshua Lee gives the red team an 82-80 oh. lead, I guess. Who knows what the scoreboard will say in two minutes. I know Tom has influence, but he doesn't have that much. Well, when the Mets go down 5 nothing in the first inning tonight, hopefully the scoreboard operator will just throw a few runs on the board for him. Uh, how are your Yankees doing, Mike? Uh, where well, are they? David will just buy an extra frankfurter, that's all. <laughs> I'm going to start ignoring the score until there are like three minutes left. 82-81 yeah, now. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> yeah. It's April Fools, that's yeah. The game is tied. We're going to remember this comeback. <laughs> oh, I maybe, won't remember any of maybe, the plays because there really not. were none. Maybe not. Damien touching the ball out of bounds, but and, they give it back to the red team. And now they're all big calls. And too. now the scoreboard says 82-69. Right, so there we go. You know, there's that. <laughs> I don't know what I'll say in a minute, but right now they lead by 13. Reason has finally taken over. For now. For now, yeah. We were having fun with it, though. Hunt oh, hey, stripped it has away. his pocket picked. Bowling going all the way, and Hunt gets the hand in. A small measure <laughs> of revenge. <laughs> And Hunt saying that went off his leg, man. How about a 13-0 run in two seconds? Okay. The fire is setting in, though. The, the black team wants to make a comeback in this game. They just did, and then they had it taken away. <laughs> Leo, no good. <laughs> nice basket. Joshua Lee, 84-69 maybe. Someday uh, we're going to pick up a book on the shelf, Coach, and it's going to say The Wit of David Russell. Uh, and it will be one page long. <laughs> Leo puts it in off glass. Come on, don't be so modest. You've come up with some pretty good ones. Leo's had a nice game. I think. I don't know how many points anybody has. but Oh, that was a tough lefty uh, right there. 7.25 to go. I'll tell you what, the red team is now trying to keep them in the game. Yeah, a few bad possessions. And Amari Taylor puts it in. Off the beautiful 7 feed. to play. Good feed by Amengo there. We can't make any guarantees about the score, but there's seven minutes left. I'm marking this down now. Yeah. This is a tough score. Bo was fouled before the shot. Nice floating continuation there. Bo's showing us he can hang in the air a little bit. Do you remember preparing for Bo when you were at BMCC? Yeah, no, I do. He's a, he's a nice little player, and he's having a really, not really solid game here. I do remember him a bit. I mean, they always had some quick guards who like to penetrate, and he's just one of those, you know, one of those guys that, um, you know, that was in that mold. So, I, you know, like I say, it's hard to remember everybody's name, but I, I do remember him. He you rings remember a bell. Ke you remember Keon Alexander, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I do remember that name. Yeah, he had, he, had a, he had one very big game against us. And he was another, another guy that was hard to contain on the perimeter, and, and he, would make, he would make pretty good decisions once he got into the lane, uh, pass plays, scoring plays. He was a nice, real solid player here as well. I, I didn't get the I didn't get the the gist of what you said before. Did you coach against uh, coach uh, uh, the coach before uh, Dansler? Dansler, coach. coach yeah, I coached did you coach Dansler? Yep, coach Dansler was the head coach. I'm sorry. Yeah, coach Dansler was the head coach. Uh, coach Atkinson one year, and then Coach Holford one year. When one Bob Holford was here, was yeah. my last year in the league. It was Atkinson then? Who, then who did you enjoy yes. coaching more against? I mean, we talked about personalities, but y you had to enjoy really coaching against Holford, right? Yeah, well, Bobby was great. I mean, you know, yeah. you know, I remember when Bobby was the coach at Hostos. I was an assistant at Adelphi at the time when he had the national championship run, and we recruited. Um, a few of his players, and one of them, Matt, Matthew Pink, came to Adelphi and played for us. Matt Pink, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, just a big physical inside player. Um, you know, was a, was a backup forward for us at Adelphi, but another terrific, terrific kid, like wonderful kid. 
And, um, you know, so I certainly, you know, saw a lot of his coaching. By the way, a nice play by Bo to stop what looked like an easy basket for Leo. Remember Larry's last year at Queensboro, they didn't win a lot of games, but they beat your Panther team twice, which you blocked out of your memory. Yeah, well, I block a lot of things like that out. <laughs> uh, not that hard as my memory is not all that strong. But um, I do remember a few of the games that we won, if that helps. Well, they were so far and few between that uh, they all stand out. Clearly, you haven't been doing this uh, this broadcasting gig very long. Well, I, I started announcing after you were at FIT, so I missed your glory days. Okay, you know, yeah, you know as, you, as you were asking Coach that question, I remember one time I was talking to Dick Carter, the coach of the Charlotte Hornets, the official, the first coach they ever had, and I, a really great guy, re- super. And that ball goes out of bounds there, and it is still a ball game. But quickly, David, I said, uh, Rex Chapman, he said, did you have to bring that name up? <laughs> and he was fooling around, of course. It was great. He was really a pain for the coach. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific ball player, though. 5.39 to go. Some subs come in for the red team, including Edwards and Bravo. So when you asked Coach about the two losses, I'm sure he blocked those out. You know, you didn't... <laughs> He could tape over that on the VHS. Yes. Yeah. Let's watch the red team try to preserve their lead here. We think they have a lead. We don't know what it'll be in two minutes. Oh, it's 11 right oh, now. Well. I have word from downstairs. <laughs> Keo. Keo. Taylor was moving one way, he was moving another, and they collided. And they called it on Taylor. 5.20 to go. They're laughing about it as that was a little bit of a collision. Bravo thought about the three. Jumper from the free throw line, rims out. But a foul called against a mango. Him and Keo were laughing about it. 5.15 to go. Hopefully this doesn't turn into a foul fest. Got to get it in. Bolin says no way. Now they come back. Kevin Paradise with the ball to Boone. A mango plays tough defense in this game. Five minutes to play. Out of all these guys, I spent the most time with Jeff Boone, number 18. So when I see him make moves, it just stays etched in my mind. Oh, that's his move right there. Paradise off glass. See, but when he played in the CUNY, as Paradise gets a big one there, Dave, what he would do is he would take that outside ladling dribble and just take it to the basket. Nobody could stop him. Here's a three-pointer. It's no good, but tipped in by somebody who's not on our roster. 86-75, 4.20 to go. So I was doing a game with my former uh, cohort, Mike Schleifer, over there on the, on the radio and TV, and I said, you know, Boone is six foot, what is he, six foot four, not even, but yet the way he plays, he plays like he's six eight. And Mike told me, yeah, that's right. He says, you know, Charles Barkley played like that. Other guys, you know, they're bigger than their size. So I always called him Big Jeff Boone. That was my name for him. Boone with the ball being guarded by a mango. They clear out for him. See if he takes it to the basket. Almost lost it. Yeah. See, he lost it on that yeah. move. Bravo that, got that's the it move off. he would make. Nice play by Bravo. 88-75. Now a double team comes over, but a foul is called. And uh, he and Amengo talking it over, Boone and Amengo, about that last play. But the way Boone fumbled that when he was trying to bring it to his other hit, he wouldn't do that when he was playing. He'd go straight to the basket on that. 
Maybe he's saving it for the new guys well, in the hey, second hey, game. Hey, uh, you know, a few years, David. <laughs> a mango, nice pass. Ooh. And the finish by Leo. You know, Leo's a big guy, and then he stands next to Craig Taylor. And, and when you look at his name, so it looks like Essen Woon, but it's a Sonye. Yeah. I remember I got the roster from York with his brother on it. I said, who's this guy, Essen Woon? <laughs> and shot is no good. So here's Anwar bowling. The layup is no oh. good. The tipping is no good. The Up. And Edwards comes away with it. And then a reach and foul. I could have uh, made it a single wow. digit game. Yeah, bo bowling was about to say this game's not over yet. He missed that gimme layup right there. So a foul will bring it down here to shoot. 3.09 to go and then these teams will combine and take on the new guys. They've had their chances, the black team. They even tied it up for a few minutes, kind of. In, in fantasy land, yes. Edwards makes a free throw. Uh, how would you uh, rate the red coach's performance uh, tonight? They're winning, right? Yes. Uh, He's been hands-on. Has he done a lot of orchestrating? Well, he did touch the ball before when he was going out okay. of bounds. He can't be All much right. more hands-on than that. <laughs> it's a three-pointer in the corner, and it's an air ball. And taken away from Bravo. Bowling inside had oh. it blocked, but whoa, a foul is called. Whoa, whoa. You can imagine neither of these coaches will be uh, 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 assaulted in a press conference after the game or <laughs> asked tough questions. Or... Two fifty-five to go. How about your time, Mike? Did you have a lot of press when you were doing things at times? Did you? Uh... Uh, I mean, a little. I mean, more more when I was an assistant at Adelphi. Um, we all would do a lot of times as the assistant. You know, the head coach wouldn't want to do the post game um, interview, um, and I would do it a lot of times. The, uh, you know, it sounds like a silly question, kind of. But the real gist of the question is: on this level, do you oh. do you take that? Uh, does that become part of uh, coaching a team? Or not so much at this level. Yeah. Um, a little bit here and there, like you know. You know, if you're playing away at a tournament, like a Christmas tournament, they might cover it, you know, locally. Um, they might ask you some stuff, but not, not that often in the, in the years that I was at FIT and BMCC. Uh, not very often. I mean, when I was at BMCC and we played the, uh, you know, the CUNY TV game of the week, if you won the game, they interviewed you after, um, you and maybe one or two of your players. But it was... Not, not that often. It wasn't so, a so highly covered area. You had to deal with a lot of in-house critique, maybe a lot of people close to the program, yeah, more, yeah. more or less. See, now David's going to be in an event later where Terry Collins doesn't get a second to himself when he's at that stadium. You know, it's like, what about this? What about this? What about that? Yeah, what about this? But but, that's, that's very true, and, of course, yeah. that's a high-pressure uh, situation. But he also has a much larger paycheck than I used to get. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It all makes sense, right? See, one ref said blocking foul, one ref called a charge, <laughs> and they, that's what they were talking about. But as Steve Summers would say, who wants the ulces? <laughs> Not me. Carl Mango saying, what happened? I, I thought a charge was called. And then they go, no, we talked about it. We called a block. Oh, actually, Steve Summers would say, what with the ulces and everything? <laughs> that's how he would say. Here comes the inbound now. Boone, no good, almost turned over. And what's the call, Ralph? What's the call? These guys are into it. So have some free throws. Game slowed down a little bit in the second half. <laughs> but at least Herman didn't call five timeouts. By the way, Steve Summers, great guy too. I, in my times dealing with him, really nice man. Now Boone has four fouls. I wonder if anybody would care if he gets to five or this is unlimited fouls. I feel like I might be the only one looking at the scoreboard foul. except when it's like really out of whack. Another foul. 
Another foul. Look at this. 231 to go. You know, if you're the red team, your dilemma right now is how do we put this away right now? I mean, because there's so many fouls, guys that are like all over the place. It's no, there's no established way of doing this. Typical alumni game. Yeah. Edwards misses the first. So the red team hits the 90 point mark. They lead by 13 with 2.30 to go. It was a little trap. A mango, about the three, gives it up. The shot is no good, but there's a putback. Amari Taylor makes it 90-79. Edwards crossing half court. Nice move. Pass to Bravo. Bravo puts it in off glass. Tom Sinekson not happy on the black bench. 92-79, two minutes to go. And it goes off the hand of Taylor and Sinekson knows his last chance. You know what, uh, by the, uh, go ahead coach. Go. Oh, no, I was just gonna say, you know, um, the red team doesn't have the, uh, the guards on the floor that were really playing great, uh, but the killer bees up front, Boone and Bravo, are really carrying, carrying them offensively. You mentioned about how they're trying to put it away. Those two guys are trying to, trying to put this away on the offensive end. Free throw line uh, coming up again. Edwards again. Now there's Edwards. Yes, I hadn't seen him. Another dynamic scorer in his short time. Uh, he played at York College also, as well as here. Well, these guys stay in the CUNY even when they go to the four-year yeah, level. Yeah, yeah, they do. Amengo did. Uh, Boone did. Teron Simpson. Simpson. And timeout called. Tom Senickson saying, I can't call timeout if it's out of bounds. But we have another clock stoppage with 1.48 to go. There was another kid that went from uh, uh, City Tech. He, he went from uh, Kingsborough to City Tech, and he became a star there at City Tech. But when he was at, uh, when he was at Kingsborough, I didn't even know he was on the court. So sometimes they even get better when they go to that senior college uh, experience. I can't, I can't remember his name. He played with Shakun Malave, though. He played the big forward next to Malave. Shakun Malave, one of the best centers that ever played in the CUNY Conference for a couple of years, anyway. Red team ball, they lead by 13. 148 to go. Down to 100 seconds remaining. Paradise. Here's Edwards running the clock down. 90 seconds to go. Edwards has to beat the clock and throws up an air ball. 125 to go. <laughs> Dabney Hunt giving Edwards a little flack on the sidelines. Going, come on, hit the rim. I'd say uh, Mr. Hunt takes his basketball seriously. Anwar bowling for three, and it's good. Hey, it's a 10-point game and a timeout called by Sinekson. I guess that's why he was uh, giving him a little flack there, because you got Anwar on the other side who can knock those down, and the three-point shot has made it a totally different game. In this, like a 24-point game early in the second half. You never come back from a 14-point deficit years ago in these situations unless you were the Cincinnati Royals playing against the New York yeah. Knicks. Huh. It was the Knicks with the comeback. Yes. <laughs> or even the Knicks-Bucks comeback. And you were Bob Cousy. Yeah. And got right in the elevator and went home. And now a mango being dragged away from the oh. bench by Dabney Hunt. They call this the tomfoolery section. <laughs> Bob Cousy was a player coach for the uh, Cincinnati Royals, one of the great guards ever in the NBA. 
You can Google him if you want. <laughs> it's worth checking out if you haven't seen him before. Here's Keo down to 105 to play. Double teamed in the corner and a foul is called with 103 to go. <laughs> Get him, guys. Hey, he's holding his rib a little bit. He's like, come on, uh, stay away from my ribs now. That's uh, incredible, though, Dave, and I didn't even realize it until I went back, and I was doing CUNY basketball for about 10 years at the time, about six, seven years. I went back, I looked at the kid's name from City Tech, and I said, you know, he played for Kingsborough, and we did his game, and we didn't even know he was on the court. <laughs> and here in the CUNY senior, he was a star. Sometimes they slip right by you. Red team loses a point because Edwards was called for a lane violation on a free throw. A three-pointer is no good. We're under a minute to play. It's 93-82. Three-pointer no good. Lost second chance points. And third chance points and fourth chance points, but they can't score. They weren't able to make it a single-digit game. They tried. And we'll give them an A for effort. And we'll give all these guys an A for effort because when you come out here, you got to put yourself to work again. It's not easy. I feel like some Edwards the, has taken uh, most of the free throws for the right team. Know, some of them, though, haven't been away that long, but some of them have, and uh, those are the ones that's really hard to get it cranked up again. Although everybody always plays ball in the park or wherever they can play it or when they get an opportunity. Another lane violation. What is going on here? A little payback for the last uh, violation Edwards had when, when he was shooting. That three-pointer is good. It's a single-digit game. 94-85. Sinnickson wanted them to foul. We're going to drag out the sending. all over but the slap in the hands and saying uh, hey you still got a bit of a game there. Keo makes the first now let's see if the red could go for a third lane violation in a row now th this will go uh, off without a hitch although he misses the free throw 95-85 still a little time to make it interesting three. here's a three pointer no good but the tip in is good nice play by Amari Taylor <laughs> And Taylor uh, got a hand on that inbound attempt. 95-87, 30 seconds left. And there's a foul. It's, so they go for about 33 minutes just going up and down, and then the last seven minutes is like game seven of the finals now. That long walk to the foul line. Kevin Paradise at the line. Makes the first, 96-87. The second is good, 97-87. 29 seconds to go. Here's Taylor, bounce pass, three-pointer is no good. Taylor tipped it, but it goes out of bounds to the red team. 22 seconds to go. There's a long pass and it's intercepted. Three-pointer, no good. Taylor not giving up, he keeps attacking the basket. Goes out of bounds to the red team. Well, he went after it with those thunder shorts that he has on. The bottoms are from the, uh, the thunder, it looks like. 13.9 to go. I, could, I don't blame them. They were my favorite team before they started falling apart. <laughs> so you're a front runner, huh? 
No, I well, just I liked like the way they played, and I liked uh, the forward on that team, the way he played. They were a hard-working team, but not had success lately. Okay. The going gets tough. You jump off the bandwagon. Not me. That's not okay. me. I just jump on at, uh, at a prime time, and then I stay <laughs> around. <laughs> at least you admit it. Yeah. I still like the New Jersey Devils. 99-87. This one uh, just about over. Here's the signature inbound. Yeah, let's see them get to 100. <laughs> Paradise puts it in. 101-87. They won't let them get to 100. Now they got 100. Hey, there's a dunk. It's 101-89. Let's see a buzzer beater. Ah, oh, he overthrew him. 2.9 to go. Roll it out, folks. Let's go. Let's see a buzzer beater. Bowling. And we're bowling for three. And he misses. That would have made it a single-digit game. Well, that was an entertaining game. 101-89, the red team wins. It's all over. Now the Tigers, the real Tigers, will get a crack at these uh, somewhat older fellas. That was a fun, entertaining game. Yeah. And then uh, we'll see you back for game two of the double. Oh, this is the fun. This, I, to me, this is the fun game to see how the uh, the little slightly older guys can do against the current guys. So the other one isn't fun for you. Oh, they're both fun. They, uh, believe me, they're both enjoy. Anytime you could come out and do basketball, it's fun. So for Joe Massey and the coach Mike Kerr, this is QCC alum David Russell. Thanks for watching.